Hello Grade 11s! In a short while, we'll be looking at the number of beds needed in a children's ward at a hospital. We'll use this data to revise how to plot a box and whisker plot. Let's have a look. Let's start by looking at the records for just one month, the month of May. This is interesting. On the 7th of May, there were only two children in the ward, but here on the 29th, there were only 82 children in the ward. So in May, there were just over 80 children on one day. That doesn't seem like a good enough argument for 80 beds. Let's see what we can find out by looking at the different kinds of averages of this data. We'll start by looking at measures of central tendency. In other words, we measure how much the data tends towards the middle of the point. A measure of central tendency tells us what is happening in the middle of the data. We use three measures of central tendency. There are the mean, the median, and the mode. The mean is found by adding up your data and dividing by the number of pieces of data you have. Let's find the mean of these numbers of children. To do this, we add up all these numbers. I'll do it on a calculator. That's 15, 16, 8, plus 5, plus 17. That's a total of 746. There are 31 days in May, so there are 31 numbers here. So I divide by 31, that's 24,06. Because I want to find an average number of people, I will round this off to 24. So the mean number of children in the ward each day is 24. I think we should compare this with the medium and the mode and see which average will help us the most. Let's look at the medium now. The medium is the middle number in the set of ordered data. So to find the medium, we need to put this data in order. Let's do that. There we are. Now we need to find the middle number. There are 31 numbers, so the middle number will be the 16th one. A quick way to find the medium is to take the number of pieces of data, which is 31. Add one, divide by two, so 31 plus one is 32. And half of that is 16. So the 16th number, it's this number here, 18. So the medium of this set of data is 18. We know what the mean and the medium are. Now let's see what the mode of this information is. The mode is the number that occurs most often in the set of data. There are four eights, three sixteenths, three seventeenths, okay. The mode will be 8. What do these three averages show us and why are they so different? To understand this, we need to look at the data again. Do you see that there are three large numbers in the data? 62, 75 and 82. They are called outliers because they are not close to the other numbers and they lie outside of the expected range of the data. These three numbers will make the mean higher than we expect. In other words, the mean will be weighed towards these higher numbers. The medium is based on the positions of numbers. So, it is in the 16th number, no matter what the value of the number is. This means that the outliers don't make the medium a larger number than expected for this data. So, for the number of beds, the median of 18 is a better reflection of the average than the mean of 24. Perhaps it will help us to know why these outliers were such high numbers. 
Matron, were you surprised by the large numbers in those three days? Not really. I remember those three days. A primary school in our area had an outbreak um, of diarrhea, and a lot of the children had to be brought to hospital because they were dehydrated. How often does this happen? About twice a year, um, once in summer and once in winter. Well, let's see if we can make sense out of these different averages. What about the mode? The fact that there were eight children in the ward on four of those days doesn't help us. The ward definitely needs more than eight beds. But if we use the medium of 18, that means for the half of the 31 days, there will be enough beds. And quite often, more than enough beds. But for these other days, 18 beds aren't enough. Now, let's look at the mean. That's 24. This might make sense, as there would be enough beds for the children every day, except on these days here. That means 10 out of the 31 days, there wouldn't be enough beds. If this happened every month, I don't think 24 beds are enough. That's the problem. Uh, sick children really do need to be hospitalized during treatment, which means beds. We need to find some other measure to strengthen our argument for more beds in the wards, because the ones that we currently have are not enough, and management won't give us as many as 80. Well, let's see if we can find another measure of data that could be useful to us. We can look at how the sample varies or is spread across the range of data. In other words, how it is dispersed. We call these measures of dispersion. The range, interquartal range, and semi-interquartal range are measures of dispersion. Let's start with the range. The range is the difference between the highest value and the lowest value. So the range of this data is 82 minus 2. That's a range of 80. That just tells us that there's a very big difference in the numbers of children from day to day but there's a more useful measure of dispersion. Do you remember what the interquartal range is? Let me show you. Have a look at the data. We have already said that the value in the middle of the data is set in the median. The median splits the data into two halves. We can find the medium of each of these halves. This half has 15 numbers in it, so the eighth number will be its middle number. That's 12. This half has 28 as its middle value. These numbers, 12, 18, 28, divide the data into four quarters, which we call these quartiles. We call 12 the lower quartile and 28 the upper quartile. The range between the upper quartile and the lower quartile is called the interquartal range. 28 minus 12 is 16. So the interquartal range is 16. What this tells us is that the middle of the data stretches from 12 to 28. In other words, the middle half of the data, or the middle 50% of the data, spreads from 12 to 28 children in the ward. Another way of saying this is that 3 quarters of the time, or 75% of the time, up to 28 children are in the children's ward. I think we could use this information to argue that the children's ward needs at least 28 beds. There would still be 7 days out of the month where they don't have enough beds. But that's better than what they have at the moment. Now people are often more convinced by an argument if you can represent the statistics to them in a visual way. The visual representation can make the statistics clearer and easier to understand. We've identified 5 important numbers from our set of data. We found the minimum values of 2 and the lower quartile of 12, the medium of 18, the upper quartile of 28, and the maximum value of 82. These five numbers give us information about the whole set of data. We call these numbers the five-number summary. One way to represent our five-number summary effectively is to draw a box and a whisker plot. The first step is to draw a horizontal axis to cover the range of values. In this case, we need to cover values from 2 to 82. It will make sense to start from 0 and go up to 85. We'll need to decide on a scale that works so that 85 can fit across the page. It is best to use the whole space available so that your graph is as big and as clear as possible. We could use a centimeter for every 5 units. Then we would need 17 centimeters across the page. Now we make a mark at each point of the five-number summary. 
So we put in a line to mark off 2, 12, 18, 28, and 82. Then we join these markers to make a box with a whisker on each side of it. The box is drawn from the lower quartile at 12 up to the upper quartile at 28. We join it at the top and at the bottom. The box now represents the interquartile range of our data. It draws our attention to the middle of the data. Then we draw a line from the box to the minimum of 2 here and another line from the box to the maximum of 82 here. These are the whiskers and they link the box to the end points. However, I need to explain that some people prefer to put a limit to the length of the whiskers. They state that the whiskers cannot be longer than one and a half times the interquartile range or the length of the box. So when you draw a box and a whisker plot, you need to check the length of the whiskers. In this plot, the length of the box is 12 to 28. So that's 16. One and a half times 16 is 24. The whisker on the right looks like it is longer than 24. Let's check. From 28 to 82. Yes, that is much longer than 24. 28 plus 24 is 52. So the whisker cannot go past 52. The last point of our data before 52 was 37. So the whisker goes to 37 and these three values, which were outliers, are plotted as separate points here at 62, 75 and 82. So there are two accepted ways to plot a box and a whisker plot. You can extend the whiskers to the minimum and maximum values or you can limit them as we have done here and plot the outliers as separate points. Now look at our box and whisker plot. What do you notice about the size and the position of the box and the lengths of the whiskers? Did you see that the diagram looks skew? The box is bigger on the right side of the median than the one on the left side. We say that the box and the whisker plot is skewed right. This means that the data is spread out more to the right of the median than the left. When data is skewed in this way, we say that it is positively skewed. What do you think this tells us about the data? In other words, how does it help us to interpret the data? And how would we use this diagram to motivate giving the children's ward more beds? Well, the diagram shows us for 50% of the time, there are between 12 to 28 children in the ward. Does this help us? Maybe if I say this differently, you will see that it is useful. We can say that up to three quarters of the time, there are up to 28 children in a ward. However, there is one aspect of this discussion that has not been addressed yet. We drew all these conclusions based on the data from only one month of the year. We did this so it was easier to explain all the data handling concepts and methods we've used. But we don't know if this is a fair reflection of what is needed throughout the year. I have looked at the data for the rest of the year. I worked out the five number summary from the data for the whole year. When I plotted this box and the whisker plot, this is what I found. It is still positively skewed with a much longer whisker on the right, but the medium is about in the middle of the box that shows the interquartile range. The whole box is shifted over the right. From this diagram, I can see that 75% of the year, up to 39 children were attended to in the children's ward of this hospital per day. So the year statistics suggest that the hospital needs at least 39 beds in the children's ward if they want to have enough beds for 75% of the year. I like this plan. On the other days when we don't have enough beds, we can make a plan of putting mattresses on the floor for the kids who are not too sick. Analyzing box and whisker plots can show us trends in the data that was collected. Let's look at two more of these plots and analyze them together. The following results were recorded for a geography test out of 40. Why don't you plot this box and whisker plot yourself before continuing? Once the box and whisker plot is drawn, we can use the box and whisker to comment on the data distribution and the significance of the size of the box itself. The minimum value is 17. The lower quartile is equal to 20. The median is equal to 22. 
the upper quartile is equal to 27 and the maximum value is 35. Using the five number summary, we can now draw a box and whisker plot. Here is the box and whisker plot. The data is positively skewed or skewed to the right. This means the mean is greater than the median. The mean is equal to 23,5 and the median 22. Let's look at one more. This box and whisker plot represents the result of a numeracy test that was written by grade 2 class. The test was out of a total of 10. You will see that the data is negatively skewed or skewed to the left. This means that the results were good because 50% of the results were 7 or above. When data is negatively skewed, like this data, the mean is less than the median. The mean for this data was 6 and the median was 7. The mean was less than the median. Thank you for joining us. Practice what you have learned by trying to do the questions in the Working with Statistics task video. You'll also be able to learn more about statistics on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.